a social setting that determines who I am, that connects with a reader, viewer, or user in a personal way, develops meaning, inspires creativity, and creates positive change. My name is Justin Leon, and Communication Theory and Practice is a class that has brought a vast amount of new knowledge to my peers and I, from introducing theorists to creating my own website. As a class, we have been learning how to truly become digitally literate and learning why it's important. To keep up with changes and improvements, one must be digitally literate or tech savvy. This means you have to learn practice practice and study what is practically in front of you. This class brought it even closer using applications such as Zite, Pocket, WordPress, and Twitter to expose us to the latest and most beneficial tools of today's digital world. One experiment that our class conducted and that stuck with me was the phone diary assignment. This assignment brought in an, an entire new perspective on cell phones and how we use them. Over a consistent 48-hour peri period, every student must accurately record their phone usage in a small notebook, organizing by number, time, date, type of usage, social, textual, length of usage, and what you're doing while using. It was not difficult to keep up with the project because the notebook was constantly with the user for immediate recording. This assignment brought to my attention how much we use our cell phones every day. Technology is becoming a vital part of people's lives, and the most usage comes from social interactions that serve no real purpose, such as Snapchat, Tumblr, or Vine. Personally, I don't use my phone 24-7, so this assignment wasn't a nuisance to me. It was actually interesting to log in and see what I exactly use my phone for, and for how long. However, Phone behavior for this assignment can easily be altered because you know you have to log in every time you use your phone. Therefore, you might not go to grab your phone as often as you normally would. I tried my best to avoid avoid this. I used my phone as if it were, there were no assignment. And overall, this portrayed the larger picture, the picture of technology and how we utilize it. We might consider ourselves digitally literate, but look closer. Is constantly going on Facebook and deleting spam mail mean you are tech savvy? Not necessarily though it's a close step towards it because at most you're connecting with other users. Let us take a closer look into the technology used. At the beginning of each class, uh, at, be at the beginning of at class, each student had to share or create their Twitter account in order to connect to the other students and professors on Twitter. It was about connecting and exploring your field of interest. Once on Twitter, I followed hundreds of accounts and photographers, companies, applications, etc. to widen my digital connection in order to help me with my topic. I used my Twitter account for live class tweeting, asking questions about class, to learn more about photography and the latest on the topic, connect to others interested in the same topic, and to share my own experiences to anyone who stumbled on my Twitter account. This live tweeting was controlled by the class hashtag, which was hashtag CTPF15 based on the class name of semester. Anytime someone had something to tweet that involved class, they would add this hashtag so everyone monitoring it could see it, including our professor. The tweet could be about what is happening live in class, a question about classwork or discussions, thoughts about certain class topics, or theorists, tweets by the professor regarding class, and anything else. By going to the hashtag's main page, you can see the hashtag CTPF15 tweets by your peers and professor right in one area. Along with Twitter came Zeit. The point of using Zite was to find out any of the latest information of your choice, including articles, blog posts, videos and pictures, websites, and more. After creating an account, I chose what I wanted to see when going on Zite, customizing by choosing nature photography, photography equipment, and anything else relating to them. Zite gives you the latest posts and talks of your topic, giving you the freedom to explore the internet in one area. Now, this is when Pocket comes into play. This application is to digitally store almost any online link into a Pocket. Then, to creating an account and to get started saving what you want. For example, let's say I was on Zite and found an article posted yesterday about wildlife photography in South Africa, but didn't want to read it right then. I would then proceed to save it to my pocket for future use. It is all about connecting. These applications connect to each other, and when used together, it can greatly improve your online work. Going from app to app to the next, keeping organized and utilizing what you have is key to having a successful relationship with technology. Find an article on Zite, save it to Pocket, then share it later with Twitter or on your blog, which is run by WordPress. WordPress is another application, which I mentioned before, that is used for creating websites. WordPress is what I post on for my nature photography blog for class, along with all my peers and their, their topics of interest, whether it be sports, weddings, tattoos, cooking, or others. I use my blog to share my own nature photo pho photographs, to post about the latest in photography, share others' work and articles, and, and to connect interested viewers to other websites and links. Sharing my own work was my favorite part because it was actually le felt like I was contributing to the world of nature photography. I hope that by sharing my work uh, to my online blog that I have inspired at least one viewer to appreciate nature and its beauty and to contribute their own work in their own way. 
when I share more than just my work, like the latest in the field, I do it in hopes to show the viewer viewers what's new, just like Lightro and its new form of photography. And by providing links, articles, and summaries, they give me they give more content to the viewer, especially about a specific topic. Aside from what we use, it is also who you learn from. In class, we read and spoke of many writers and theorists that write and talk about our topics in class. Kevin Kelly wrote We Are the Web, and it's an article online that we read and discussed. Kelly discusses the transforming technology over time and the internet, going through how the web has improved, how we use it now compared to 10 years ago, and why us as humans make the web what it is. When starting to talk about 2015, Kelly states that the web continues to evolve from a world ruled by mass media and mass audiences to one ruled by messy media and messy participation. This is how the theorists this is how the theorist sees the world and its technology. Everything is one big mess, and to him, the only thing we have to clean up, clean it up, is a toothbrush, metaphorically speaking. It would take years of practice, trends, and changes in order for the web and its users to clean up their way of using the internet. There is too many worldwide users. For example, 14 million blogs launched around the world just in 2015 so far. That's a significant increase in users for the web and shows that generations are slowly changing to be tech savvy. Now, technically speaking of the web actually being us, Kelly states that this planet-sized computer is comparable in complexity to a human brain. Both the brain and the web have hundreds of billions of neurons or web pages. We are the brain and we control its circuits. What this class has taught me is to truly be digitally literate. In order to fulfill this, you must keep up with the latest trends, whether it be new apps or technology. Also be aware of your digital surroundings, meaning to utilize anything possible to your advantage and to realize the fast-moving and changing world.